Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today we're going to talk about a little bit of a nerdy topic, but it's so important for anybody who has irritable bowel syndrome, who has acid reflux, who has Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, any gut disturbance, and then for folks with autoimmune disease or a highly reactive immune system. One of the things that we probably don't pay as much attention to in the ketogenic space in terms of talking about is something called LPS. LPS, okay? Lipopolysaccharides. Big medical word. What is lipo? Lipo means fat. Uh, poly means multiple. Saccharides means sugars. And there's a protein thrown in there. So this is something, a little molecule that is made of uh, fat, protein, and sugars. Uh, so what, what, does this, what does this mean? Well, LPS or lipo, uh, lipopolysaccharides are molecules that are produced by specific bacteria in our gut. They sit on the surface membrane of the bacteria and they protect the bacteria. They protect the bacteria from being attacked by the immune system. But what these, what these uh, LPSs, lipopolysaccharides, do is they kind of poke the immune system in its eye. They say, screw you, you're not going to eat me today. And anywhere we have what I call interface interaction, anywhere in our bodies where our body lining interfaces with the outside world, obviously the skin, the lungs, the airway, and then the gut, and in females, the vagina as well. Any place where the outside world interacts with, comes into contact with our bodies, we have prote a highly protective immune system. I call it the barrier immune system, dominated by monocytes and eosinophils, uh, and there are a few of these barrier immune, immune cells. And this LPS occurs in certain bacteria, primarily in the gut. So we're going to focus on the gut. It occurs in the skin, occurring in the lungs, but we're talking about metabolics, we're talking about eating and drinking, we're talking about the gut. And for those of you that use big words like SIBO, small intestinal bacteria, all that BS, you know I don't buy into that at all. But the, the gut biome is very, very important to understand. And these bacteria, particularly the gram-negative uh, um, bacteria, particular type, there's mainly three forms. There's aerobic, anaerobic, um, there's gram-positive and gram-negative uh, bacteria. And these are the gram-negative bacteria. The most common one that, that everybody knows is called E. coli, and it lives in the gut of all of us. There's other ones called Salmonella and a few uh, and, and several others in the gram-negative bacteria, and they colonize our gut. And one of the key things about um, these gram-negative bacteria, some of them produce robust, big layers of um, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, on their surface. And they very aggressively defend themselves against our immune system. So you've got this clash. You've got our immune system trying to chew these LPSs and then just getting activated. And depending genetically on to what extent your immune system is, is activated. I've got a gut of steel, okay? Occasionally my gut gets a little annoyed, but it really doesn't overreact to the gram-negative bacilli, doesn't overreact to the LPS. Even when I've had some food poisoning, my gut deals with it uh, appropriately. It doesn't cross over. But there are some people genetically where they get this really angry reaction. So they get uh, ulcers and gastritis from a particular bug in the, in the stomach, the only bug that can tolerate acid and actually lives on the protein in the stomach, called H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, which has LPS on it. Mm hmm so you've got this, the bug itself causing problems and then your own immune system being triggered by this bug causing a lot of problems. So, uh, you know, so often in the sport I played rugby, it wasn't the guy that irritated uh, the other player. It was the reaction. I broke my hand on a guy's face once because he moved his face, broke this finger. Long story short, that was a, year, a few years ago in rugby, but he irritated me so much that I tried to whack him and guess who got called? I got called for whacking him and breaking my hand on his face. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, okay. No, I'm proud of that, very proud of that. But, but, um, but those were the days when it was a bit of how's your father on the, on the rugby pitch. Uh, nevertheless, I was the guy that got sent off. I was the guy that got carded, not this guy that in every scrum was hitting me. I was playing uh, uh, eight and lock and, and up front, and he was wackadoodling me in every scrum. But no, the ref didn't see that, he saw me. 
Same thing with our immune system. Sometimes it's not the bug that gets flagged. The bug has got this protection. It's trying to live. It's trying to do its thing. It's trying to be uh, alive in our gut. But our immune system overreacts. Our immune system gets seen punching these boys. And uh, that's where the inflammation happens. And, and then if you think about this, now I'm not this bad, but you look at some of the hockey players. I, I think ice hockey players are probably the healthiest, fittest group of athletes I've ever come across. Just in absolute awe of them. I didn't grow up playing that. Be that as it may, you watch that ice hockey player get into a fight, rumble, 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 get separated, get sent to the, uh, the cooling off bin. And then they start smashing things uh, in, on their own, on the, in their own stadium. That doesn't make sense. Well, that's exactly what your immune system is doing. So what happens is you've got these immune cells called eosinophils and other cells. And, and they come into contact with this bacteria that's got LPS on its surface. That's the, the enforcer niggling, niggling. They get into a rumble on the ice. The guys get thrown into the, into the uh, penalty box. And then he takes off all his, his gloves and he's smashing the, uh, the perspex and he's breaking everything in his own stadium. That's an autoimmune reaction. That is where that same eosinophil, all angry and producing antibodies, goes off in your bloodstream, goes to other parts of your body. Maybe your thyroid. We see Hashimoto's disease. Uh, maybe in your vascular system, causing vascular inflammation. Um, triggering a variety of autoimmune responses far away from the playing field, which is your gut. That's LPS. LPS triggered immune stuff. And we've got several proteins in the food that we eat. Gluten is a common one. But we get these cross reactions. And if your immune systems are angry and they can't, man they can't manage their anger well, then off they go and they cause havoc within the body. That's autoimmune disease. Whether it's attacking your spine, muscular scler uh, uh, MS, um, muscular sclerosis. And we see lots of patients with that disease. And... In large part, it is triggered. It's an autoimmune disease. It's triggered by the gut reacting to these bacteria with LPS. We also see it in outbreaks. We see it more acutely where there's a war going on in the gut. When you have some of these really nasty bugs that you get infected with, every now and then we'll hear about these outbreaks of an E. coli. And it's not the bug itself that's causing the problem. On the surface of that bug is this really nasty endotoxin, this LPS called an endotoxin that just creates havoc in our gut. And it can send you into shock. It can send you into septic shock. And you can die from this. We hear about salmonella poisoning. We hear about E. coli poisoning. That's LPS. And LPS, usually associated, not always associated, uh, but usually associated with plants and with human plant or, or animal plant interaction. So these bugs live in, in animals, uh, especially ruminants. They get pooped on. They poop on the lettuce. You eat the lettuce and you get into trouble. Humans poop on the lettuce. Uh, some places they use, yep, 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 human manure for uh, growing plants. Don't want to go there. I don't want to imagine that. That's why I don't eat plants. I let the cow eat the lettuce and then I eat the cow. Um, be that as it may, we hear about these outbreaks. Obviously, salmonella can occur in bad fish. Uh, it's a contaminant for people's hands who didn't wipe their poop properly. So it's poop contamination. That's how it gets spread. But this LPS molecule is a very, very noxious molecule and a dominant Carnivore diet reduces that. Everybody, everybody in my practice, when I do blood work for the first time, I test for H. pylori. Because in about 40 to 50% of my patients this is positive and we have to treat for it. Primary care doctors should be doing that routinely, but they don't. They don't. Okay? And just read up about H. pylori. You can see how toxic it is from a variety of different things. But um, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, is a bacterial toxin. It can kill you, but it can certainly make you awfully, awfully sick. So then I was thinking about my diet and I thought, okay, if why is it that I'm so resistant to LPS? And I went to, the, I went to research and I looked at uh, uh, up for studies. And here I came across a very interesting thing. Now, what's interesting is a lot of this research was done in the old days before we demonized fat, before we demonized red meat, before we demonized things. So this study was published in 1981. Excellent. And, and look in the show notes, you'll see the reference. And it says the inhibition of bacterial cell growth by ketone bodies. Ketone bodies. And I'll just read you a bit of this. It says the effect of ketone bodies on the growth in culture of Escherichia coli, E. coli, was investigated. Both growth and glucose utilization, the use of sugar by these bugs, um, were inhibited in the presence of 
hydroxybutyrate ketones. Lower con concentrations of hydroxybutyrate cause proportionally less inhibition of growth, so it's, it's dose dependent. Acetoacetate, which is a byproduct of ketones, also inhibited growth, but other glycolytic inhibitors and chemical analogs of D3-hydroxybutyrate either did not inhibit or proved to be too toxic for bacterial growth. So ketones, hydroxybutyrate, prevents the growth of these bugs and actually uh, uh, often even kills them. Citrate-enhanced ketone body effect also inhibited the growth of Klebsiella pneumonia, Enterobacter erogenes, Citrobacter freundi, uh, Salmonella typhimurium, all of these LPS-producing bacteria that can go through and cause endotoxic shock. 1981, folks, we knew about this. But then, oh, fat is bad. You've got to be eating all the sugar. Fat is bad. Well, that's ketones, folks. This was the experiment. This is ketone IQ. This is ketone IQ. And when you drink this, when you're on a ketogenic diet, when you're eating fat and you're not eating sugar and starch, and you spike your diet with ketone IQ on a regular basis, especially for those people with so-called SIBO, or if you do get food poisoning, which often is caused by this LPS, try the ketone IQ. See if it makes a difference. I believe it does. Now, that's anecdotal. But certainly this paper, and you'll see it in the, in the show notes, this paper supports the fact that ketones, hydroxybutyrate, kills these bugs, reduces their aggressive nature. And we know ketones also help us to quieten down our own immune system. They're anti-inflammatory. So if you're on a ketogenic diet and you have access to ketones, ketone IQ, for example, it's one of the best weapons against the toxicity of LPS. Now, the other option you have is to get sick and tolerate it and hope your immune system beats the crap out of it and maybe suffer some autoimmune disease. Or you can take antibiotics to kill these bugs, which is fine. You may need antibiotics. Certainly, we use antibiotics as well to kill H. pylori. But having read this paper, I'm now going to add a ketone IQ to the formula of these patients to see if we can get the kill rate higher. Kill rate's about 80 to 85% on average for H. pylori. It doesn't kill it. Very fastidious, very difficult to kill. And we're trying to increase the kill rate. So ketogenic diet, use of hydroxybutyrate, destroys bacteria that are trying to destroy us with the endotoxins, the LPS endotoxins. And if you are someone that is, has a propensity to autoimmune disease, especially gut-based, celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel syndrome, get yourself on a ketogenic diet and maybe supplement a little bit with ketones. Let me know. Certainly the literature supports that. And a lot of, people, a lot of physicians, a lot of practitioners in the ketogenic space talk a little bit about this, but not enough. Why are you sterilizing your gut with SIBO, all these noxious... No, you don't need to do that. Dumb your immune system down. Dumb down the endotoxins, the LPS endotoxins from these bacteria. Change your biome by adopting a high-fat carnivore diet rather than a plant-based diet. Wash your hands. Soap and water. Show good hygiene. And perhaps your gut will thank you. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. My job is to make you think and talk about topics that sometimes aren't addressed adequately in the ketogenic space.